One of the more important questions in astrobiology is in regards to photosynthesis. The question being, can some kind of photosynthetic life, such as cyanobacteria or even plants, survive in conditions on other planets orbiting different types of stars? Or in other words, is there any way we can ever find some kind of a photosynthetic life or anything involving photosynthesis on planets with stars that are not G-type? Or basically on planets orbiting stars that are not the same as our Sun. And even though G-type stars, or stars like our Sun, produce a lot of light necessary for photosynthetic life on planet Earth, we also know that only about 7-8% of all stars in the Milky Way are G-type. And the vast majority of stars out there are either M-type or K-type. Or basically red dwarfs or orange dwarfs. Suggesting that the chance of something out there on a different type of a star is obviously a lot higher. But the question is, can this something photosynthesize? And well, a wonderful person, this is Anton. And in today's video, we're going to discuss a recent study that basically takes a look at one of the most common type of stars out there, K-type, discovering something really exciting. Although here, I guess, let's start with a very brief reminder of types of stars. And so as you can see, G-type stars, like our Sun, are just a little bit larger and a little bit hotter compared to K-type and M-type. But they're also a little bit more rare. And as a result of some of the initial discoveries around red dwarfs or M-type stars, a lot of recent research, including a lot of recent telescopes, have actually mostly focused on red dwarfs or M-type stars. And that's because based on discoveries from systems like the TRAPPIST-1 that you see right here, we know that these star systems are extremely likely to contain terrestrial planets not so different from planet Earth. As you might know already, TRAPPIST-1 has seven planets. Which of course kind of implies that the chance for finding life around an M-type star is maybe just a little bit higher. With a lot of recent telescopes, including the TESS telescope, even to some extent designed to specifically discover planets around M-type stars anywhere between 30 and 300 light years away from planet Earth. But in the last few years, researchers have also discovered that M-type stars tend to be extremely violent and basically produce an enormous amount of flares and super powerful emissions that would actually strip any planet of pretty much anything on the surface. On top of this, all of the planets in the Red Dwarf system would also be tidally locked. And so in essence, the chance for finding a habitable planet around these stars has actually dropped dramatically once a lot of these discoveries have been made. And so if not M-type, why not K-type? Why not orange dwarfs? And turns out that orange dwarfs possibly represent something even more exciting. Here we're talking about stars just a little bit smaller than the Sun, possibly 60-90% to 90 of the mass of the Sun, that can technically exist for at least 70 billion years. In other words, a typical lifespan of an orange dwarf is much, much longer than any G-type star. Which is of course really intriguing, because it gives life a really long time to evolve. Moreover, these stars are relatively stable. They don't actually emit as much ultraviolet light or as much ionizing radiation as a G-type star and do not produce powerful flares like M-type stars. Making these stars overall a lot more hospitable to potential life and a lot less dangerous over much longer periods of time. Moreover, planets here would not be tidally locked, mostly because they are much farther away from the star and the habitable zone here is approximately 0.1 to 0.3 astronomical units away from the star. And so here we have stars with no flares, no powerful radiation, no tidal locking and stable habitable zones for tens of billions of years. Moreover, they're at least four times as abundant as G-type stars increasing the chance for potential life by so much more. And in the past, at least a few of these stars have been already discovered to possess planets. For example, 54 Piscium, Gliese 86, or a much more exciting planet from recent times, HD 40307G. The first ever discovered habitable zone exoplanet orbiting a K-type star. And because the chance for a potential life to develop and to survive around a K-type star is much, much higher than around an M-type star, the important question to ask here is, can photosynthetic life survive here as well? And the thing is based on previous research with M-type stars, by mimicking conditions on a typical red dwarf, 
researchers discovered that certain types of extreme cyanobacteria, especially the ones able to use far red light for photosynthesis, can technically survive on a red dwarf, assuming perfect conditions. But a typical tree or a typical leaf would not be able to produce anything if it was basically only getting light from a red dwarf only. So a typical red dwarf would have a lot of difficulty with photosynthesis, not to mention flares and once again tidal locking. But turns out it's a completely different story for an orange dwarf or a K-type. And here the researchers conducted first every experiment. They essentially created conditions mimicking a typical orange dwarf, making sure that the right amount of light was emitted in very specific wavelengths, in order to test the hypothesis that you can technically have complex photosynthesis. And well then they took two different things. A relatively common plant and a relatively common cyanobacteria. The plant was garden grass, also known as Lepidium sativum, that's easily adaptable to a lot of different soils and tends to grow rapidly. For cyanobacterium, they chose an extremophile known as Crucocidiopsis, an unusual cyanobacterium that can actually stay dormant for millions of years and generally resist radiation, desiccation, and extreme temperatures. So technically, a perfect astronaut. And then they basically placed both of them in G-type and K-type stellar conditions, while also adding a control condition with no light whatsoever. And well, to everyone's surprise, the watercress seedlings and the cyanobacterium thrived in both conditions. Here both solar and K-dwarf samples were extremely similar, but not exactly the same. For example, for the solar conditions, the seeds sprouted at least a day earlier, at the same time, the key dwarf samples were slightly larger in terms of leaf surface area, but also ended up being a little bit taller and also had a much higher water content. But importantly enough, when testing for photosynthetic efficiency, there was basically absolutely no difference. Both plants were just equally as efficient and were able to survive in conditions under both types of stars. But an even more intriguing discovery was in regards to the extremophile cyanobacterium. Here, this bizarre survivor, whose efficiency was measured using something known as average integrated density, turned out to be even more efficient under a K-type star conditions. In other words, it seemed to produce slightly better and slightly higher values compared to growing under the sun. And that's of course a super exciting discovery because, well, it means that if there is a star somewhere out there that contains an Earth-like planet and potentially conditions that can allow photosynthesis to evolve, on those planets we can technically discover something very similar to what we have right here on our own planet. Which also of course implies that we should maybe not put as much emphasis on M-type stars and instead try to focus more on various orange dwarfs, which do have a much higher chance for complex life to survive. And one of the discoveries in the study can actually provide us with certain things we can look out for when looking at these exoplanets in the future. Here we basically have our first potential biosignatures that could be detected in some kind of an exoplanet out there orbiting a distant orange dwarf. And so in that sense, this particular study answers a really important question. Could various plants and various photosynthetic organisms survive under conditions that are not similar to our sun? And because the answer here is yes, it also means that one day we might even find some kind of a planet out there that contains a lot of other signs of photosynthesis. So not just things like oxygen, but maybe even ozone layer, which we know our planet formed as a result of billions of years of photosynthesis. The layer that's responsible for protection of everything on the planet, and the layer that could not possibly exist without that early photosynthetic life. And so on that note, definitely a super exciting research and a somewhat intriguing discovery, but also maybe just a start of what could potentially become an important search for life around orange dwarfs. And so as exciting as it was to discover a TRAPPIST-1 system with its seven planets, chances for life here are just a little bit too slim. But at least for now, that's I guess all we have. Once there's even more research or more exciting planets are found orbiting around orange dwarfs, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.